Trash, Part 5, Chapter 4. Raphael, Gardo, and Junjun, Rat. She was no ghost, of course. And when we got ourselves together, we helped her climb down. Rat went up and helped her because she was small, and we decided to take her out of there fast. Things were getting so strange, and we were all having the same idea straight away. But we needed to get clear for a while. Little Pia was so weak she could hardly stand up, and we all realized none of us had eaten properly. And we thought, we've come this far. The police aren't going to trace us here. Can we just get a moment to think? Gardo counted out the money, and we were low. Our stash was down to a few hundred only, but we all needed food, little Pia most of all. I tell you, she was skin and bone to touch and dirty all over. She smelled bad. We went out right of the cemetery and found a shack and ate chicken and rice, thinking we might as well eat good. We so needed it. We were at the end of the trail. We had to be. And even at that point, before we talked, we knew what was happening. And we were getting excited, frightened, jittery, cold and sweating like a fever. Rat and Pia were just about the same size, and he could see she was in a bad way, more than me and Gardo. He's been starved like that and scared out of his wits, so he knew what to do. He made her eat really slow, mixing gravy into the rice and feeding her. He got her water and made her drink it, and then he found her some banana, which he chopped up small like she was a baby. In a way, she was a baby. She was scared, but she was so weak she didn't know what to do, and we still think Rat saved her life. She told us she's been in Aravo for a week to meet her father. It was a place they often went together because her little brother and her mother were there. Some children had found her and taken her to one of the shanties. She'd been fed a bit and asked questions. She kept going back to her mother's grave and waiting. And of course, she wasn't tall enough to read her own name on the grade above. Or if she did, it didn't mean anything to her. She never said anything about it. Her father had sent her a message to meet him, and whoever looked after her had taken her there and left her. They must have read about his death and knew they were well rid of her, what with no more rent coming in. Pia Dante was alone. Gardo. We talked to a boy at the eating house and for 50 got her space out back for the night and Rat laid her down and got an extra blanket because a typhoon wind is cold for a child. I saw him smoothing out her hair, wrapping her up, talking to her and promising we'd be back to look after her. Then he came over to me and Raphael. He was crying. I'm putting that in because I think it's important. It's the only time we ever saw Rat cry. All of us knew now that this was the time to thrash it all out and do the final, final plan. We ordered tea and I, Gardo, spent 70 on a bottle of brandy. And I made us all take three fingers because that's what lay ahead was the hardest. And yet, in a way, it was also just a free fall now. The plan was so clear we couldn't go outside it. Three fingers was enough because we needed to be brave for the next bit. Braver even than my friend and brother Raphael in the police station because nobody goes among the graves on All Souls Night after midnight because that's when the dead are left to themselves again. So the ghosts are getting sad. We knew we had to, however, there was no question because it was the only time we could do what we had to do. Can you blame us if we stoked up on a drink? We need tools, I said, and we worked out what we needed. We're gonna need a way out too, said Raphael, and we planned our route. I said, what does $6 million look like? I think the brandy was hitting me and making me smile. All of us then, we started to laugh, and for the first time in what seemed a while. And you know what? We knew it wasn't ours even then and couldn't be ours. We knew that a piece of it was all we wanted. And we knew we were so close. The air was buzzing around us as if the ghosts were above us. That much money, if it really was there, six million. I promise you the one thing we all knew was that it was not ours and we would not even try to take more than a little. We split up to look for tools, saying we'd meet at the grave as soon as we could. We knew it without saying it. We had to go back and smash in the slab and get inside. I'm sure we agreed that without quite saying it. Raphael went off and found a sack and cheap old broken knife. I went scavenging close up under the shanties where the graveyards turned to swamp and sea. I found a strong iron spike. It was tying up someone's boat, so I tied it to a wooden stake and took the spike, quiet as the breeze. Rat found rope and a plastic sheet, which was everything we needed. I'd said to Raphael, we do this job fast. Once we start, we do not stop. And we hugged each other. I'm Raphael, 
I said to Gardo, it's going to make a noise. We do it fast, okay? We finished the brandy and felt stronger and better. Gardo again. We climbed up to little Pia's grave box. I think there were ghosts everywhere just watching. Raphael held the spike and Rat passed up a stone. Everyone had gone and most of the candles had blown out because the typhoon was getting closer and the wind was strong and cold, nagging at us. I didn't have a shirt and I could feel it right in off the sea. I swear I could feel them all, those dead around me still, watching me with wide awake eyes. Dead men above and below and dead kids and dead mothers. I could almost see them watching and watching so I didn't want to look up. The stone was in my good hand, just the right size. Raphael had the spike in the corner and I leaned back and gave it the most almighty crack. The thing moved right off and the noise was more a thud, a real deep dead sound. I guess because the seal was so new, it hadn't gotten itself all fixed and hard. But the second blow punched it right in and it fell in on itself in three big pieces. One of them nearly on Rat's feet, so he jumped back. Then he was up with rope and candles right up against me and we were lighting them fast inside the grave hole where the wind couldn't get it. The air was musty, but there was no bad smell. There was a coffin, white as white, for a child, and we all felt scared, I guess. It had a layer of dust, and the flowers on it were very dead. Other than that, everything was fresh. No smell, and we all knew what dead things smell like, because people throw dead things out on the dump site. I found a dead kid once, and there's no mistaking that particular stink once you've had it in your face. We threw out the other bits of broken stone and eased her out. Back to me, Raphael. Like Gardo says, the wind was getting up, and it made us want to work faster than ever. Rat got the rope around the coffin. Then, as we slid her out, squeezed right into the hole so he, would, so he was safe and firm. That meant he could let it down to us, because six million dollars in a wooden box? I tell you, six million dollars in a box is heavy, if that's what's in the box. Don't forget, we didn't know that for sure. We only thought we knew, but it felt as heavy as that kind of money ought to be. We got her on the ground, and though we'd all said we'd move fast, we had to see what was inside right then and there. The knife was our screwdriver. Eight screws held the lid, and I know, lifting a coffin lid? You think all the evil things in the world in a graveyard in the middle of the night? But I think all three of us knew in our hearts now. So we just did those screws and lifted it. And like Gardo says, the ghosts were around us, watching. Oh, sweet Lord, the money was there. The money was there. It was packed in so snug. It was like the box was made for it. You want to know what six million looks like? I will try to tell you. To me, sitting next to it, it looked like food and drink and changing my life and getting away out of the city forever. It looked like change. It looked like the future. I don't know what it looked like. We stared a moment and nobody spoke. We had the plan and the plan was not finished yet. And none of us suddenly thought, let's keep it all. Nobody even suggested we change the last part of our plan. We knew the money wasn't ours because even though I never met that man, Gabriel Alondres, the way Gardo had told us about him, I knew he was a good man through and through. It was all souls night and he was there, I hope and believe, at the front of the ghost crowd, right there with us. I think he stayed with us too. I hope with Jose Angelico, arm in arm, with us all the way.